This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Cats. Cats, 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 cats. Cats, 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 cats. Cats, 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 cats? Don't worry, I'm not having a stroke. I just wanted to see how much I could communicate without different words. You could probably perceive the tone of my voice, the inflection, and even notice that I asked a question at the end. But you have no idea what I was actually saying. I feel this way a lot with my cats. I don't know about you, but when my cats are yelling at me or making cute little chirps, it feels like they're speaking their own language. Just not always one that I understand. Which is funny because cats only meow at humans. They don't meow at each other. So it feels like it should mean more to us. We should know what they're saying. I think I get the gist most of the time, like, I'm hungry, or you're home, or hey, how's it going? But other times, it feels like they're communing with spirits, like Loki will walk into the hallway and yowl at 2 a.m. I have no idea what's going on there. So maybe cats have a different language that we simply can't understand. But what if we could remove that barrier? If your cats could speak English, what would they say? I'm far from the first person to ask this question, and there are plenty of interspecies language experiments throughout time. For example, in the 1930s, two scientist parents adopted a chimpanzee named Gua and raised her alongside their own child, Donald, who was around the same age. They treated them equally as brother and sister, and tried to teach Gua how to speak and act like a human. But after nine months, the experiment ended. Donald was copying Gua's behavior and vocalizations, and the Kelloggs became worried that he would be forever messed up. In 1947, a different couple adopted a chimp named Vicky and spent seven years training her to speak using speech therapy. At the end, Vicky could only kinda say four words. Mama, Papa, Cup, and Up. Despite tiresome work, this experiment was seen as proof that primates were not capable of using or understanding language. These days, we know that humans and chimps have totally different vocal cords, and apes don't control their breath the same way that humans do, which is a vital component to speech. Without even realizing it, when you speak, you calculate how long your next sentence will be and decide how much air to take in. Wild, right? So no matter how hard these scientists' families tried, they couldn't have taught their ape kids how to talk. Well, not verbally at least. Of course, not all languages are audible. And in fact, gorillas have hands that are nearly as dexterous as our own. That brings us to Coco the gorilla probably one of the most famous examples of human-animal language crossover. Coco was taught to speak sign language when she was only one year old by an animal psychologist named Penny Patterson. From a young age, it was immediately clear that sign language was a way better tool for communicating with apes than spoken language. By two years old, Coco had supposedly learned 600 unique words and, at her peak, used a thousand signs and understood over 2,000 of them. Even more amazingly, Coco started making up new words by combining signs like finger bracelet to mean ring, and drink fruit for melon, and a whole lot more. And through sign language, Coco also revealed a deeper, more complex inner life. When she heard the news that her pet kitten, Allball, died in a car accident, Coco signed, bad, sad, bad, and frown. Cry frown sad. 
It seemed as though Coco had harnessed human language to finally reveal her inner self. <sighs> so, coming back to my cats, of course, it's impossible for them to learn how to speak any human language. They simply don't have the body parts. Their vocal cords and their mouths are not capable of producing the same sounds that humans do. Even if Loki does sound like a screaming baby sometimes. And their paws are not nearly as dexterous, so ASL is out. But that doesn't mean that they couldn't learn how to harness language. Cats can learn all sorts of tricks. I've taught Bill here how to high five, and both of the cats learn how to respond to the demented duckfish noise. Language is just another trick, right? I mean, take all these now famous cats and dogs who seem to have learned to speak thanks to their owner's training. I've been watching a lot of videos of Bunny the dog lately, and uh, I don't know, I've been thinking about this language stuff a lot, so I thought, hey, why don't I do that? What if I taught my cats language? through buttons. After all, it doesn't seem too difficult, and there's even some psychological evidence to back it up. Our good friend and famous five head BF Skinner theorized that babies learn language through operant conditioning, where you learn to associate some specific behavior with some kind of specific outcome. See, when you're little, you babble and uh, put a bunch of sounds together, and eventually, when you accidentally say, Mama, your parents react, and that makes you say the word again. So. According to Skinner, through thousands of tiny little reinforcements and punishments of vocalizations or signs throughout your life, you eventually learn how to speak a language. And in fact, this is exactly how Coco the Gorilla was trained, through operant conditioning. So with that logic, we should be able to teach cats language too. Of course, a cat's never going to have the vocabulary of a fully grown adult or end up reciting the John Galt monologue from Atlas Shrugged or whatever, but Maybe I could get Bill and Loki to the same place as like a one or two year old. You know, we could uh, have them using simple words or maybe even combining words and do all of that simply by using reward and punishment. Although I won't be punishing the cats, so just rewards. So can my cats be as smart as a two year old? Let's find out. The experiment would be simple. First, I purchased some buttons online that allowed me to record my own voice. I was pretty happy with how easy these buttons were to press. Next, figure out the words. Allie insisted that she be part of the decision-making process for fear that I'd teach the cats something useless or annoying. But <laughs> when have I ever done that? Oi. Third, print out the words on a label maker. We ended up deciding on eight commands. Food, pets, treat, snuggle, outside, attention me, no, and yes. A uh, quick note though, early on I got rid of yes and replaced it with play because I thought that would be a much more useful word. If there's any words that you think were better or that you would have liked to have seen, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll make another video. I guess one of the questions that I have is like, should we keep them on this board or should we put them strategically in different places where it'll make sense? Good question. The pros of keeping it on the board is that they're all in one place. They're always going to be in the same order. Mm -hmm. The cons are they're pretty close together. And so you could get some false positives, right? If the cat presses the wrong button or something like that. Or maybe, I don't know if it, it's too many that are close together to make it confusing or not. So if they're not on the board, the advantage is then they're location specific. So they're easier to distinguish. The disadvantage is these buttons aren't very loud. Like that might not be very audible if we're in another room. If they're all on one board, then it's easy to use this and it's easier to film. I think keeping it on the board makes sense and then we can just move the board around. You really have to like mess with these a lot to get anything yeah, yeah. quality out of it, yeah. Treat. Treat. That's pretty clear. All right, so I think we've got them. Pretty good. After that was decided, I painted the board to further differentiate each side so that the cats could better tell which buttons were which, firmly attached the buttons, 
and we're ready to go. Now, training. <laughs> All right. Well, it's day one, and uh, it's a little bit daunting to look at all these different words here in front of me. We're gonna be starting off with probably the easiest word to teach them, which is treat. They're easily the most motivated by treats. First, I'm going to associate the button and the sound from the button with the treats, and then I'll reward them for doing actions like pressing the button with the thing that that the word correlates to, which would be a treat in this case. So anyway, without any further ado, let's uh, let's get this training rolling. I know you love the treats. Ready? I'm trying to get him to paw at my hand or something. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Push the button. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. 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 I don't think he quite gets the press yet. He's definitely getting much closer. He's he's reaching out his paw. Let me pull you over here so you can see what I'm talking. What I want to get him to do is to touch the button before I'll give him the treat. Push the button. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet, 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 sweet. All right, I think we're at our max. We'll pick up tomorrow and we'll have to figure out something for Bill because he is not enjoying the treats. So we'll probably have to get some new treats for him uh, or start with a different word. I guess we'll see. All right. So I went out for a run today and while I was out running, I realized that Bill really loves eggs. Every morning he comes here, he hops up here, and he just wants some eggs. So I thought, why not use that to motivate him to press the treat button? Well, Bill has run away and seems to be done with training for today. So we're at day three. Bill's here for his eggs again. I did order some new treats, but those probably won't be arriving until Wednesday. All right, Bill. Bill, Loki. You done? Bill has left. I guess he got tired of the egg. It's motivating, but maybe not motivating enough. So I'm really looking forward to getting these new treats. Now let's do some training. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Press the button. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. You can see Billy's already reaching for some eggs. He's really reaching for my hand rather than going for the button. That quite hasn't been communicated yet. I'm also a little bit worried that we're doing this at the table rather than doing it on the ground. But you know, we're working with what we got. We'll change it later on so that it's, it actually is the correct environment. Oh, and he's left. So obviously the next hardest part is gonna be getting him to actually step on one of the buttons and putting some weight on it because it actually takes some force. You know, him just tapping it will not activate it. He needs to, physically step on the button. I have no idea if this is gonna work or not, but why not? Ready? Come here, come here. I don't think he knows that it's his body weight that is putting pressure on this and turning it on. Yeah, yeah, good kid. Go back. Hey! 
So he did that on accident. He has no idea what he did. But let's try and get him to do that again. Yeah, good kitty. Good kitty, yeah. Oh, you're doing so great. Yeah. To the board. Yeah. Good. Oh. We've reached the end. Thanks. Yeah, good cat. That's close enough, yeah? Yeah. Oh, wrong button, but I'll give you a treat for that. Yeah. 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 Press the button. Yeah. 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 Good. Press the button. Good. Yeah. Ready? Press the button. Yeah. Good cat. All right. Okay, so we're on to the next day. Um, I did a little bit of training with Loki yesterday off camera. And you can see that he has definitely picked up. He knows now that pressing the buttons gives him something. Regardless of what button he presses, I think I'll start uh, doing the appropriate action. Yeah. So, Loki, let's get going. You wanna play? play? All right, here we go. Get you some food later. No, we'll get you food later. Oh, you want a treat? Good. Good. I'm gonna walk away and see if, uh... oh, yeah, he pressed it. I'll walk over to the other side of the room here. You won't even see me really on screen. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm gonna go behind him. Oh, that, that didn't work. Snuggle is something else. That's not gonna get you. You want attention? There you Yeah. Yeah. Food. Food's not yet. No, no. Not yet. No, wrong one. You want snuggles? You want pets? Snuggle? Okay. Okay. All right, so. I haven't filmed for about a week, but I have been continuing to train, particularly with Loki. Bill, on the other hand, has not learned pretty much anything. <laughs> he doesn't like any of the treats that we have. I even bought some new treats. I bought some Bonita Flakes and, and some freeze-dried tuna, and he just like, you know, turns his nose to that. He's like, no, that's that's not good enough for me. So uh, I bought some other treats that arrived today. We're gonna try those out and see if he likes them and see if they don't make him barf. Let's get into it. Attention. Attention. Oh, you want attention? attention. Yeah, it, attention. I don't I don't think you mean to press that one. You want another treat? Okay, all right. Give me a second. All right, all right. I know. You can clearly see that he's learning the button, and uh, now he's just spamming it. <laughs> now you gotta find the button again. Ready? Now where is it? Press the right button. Okay, that gives you attention. Play. Okay. So Loki's getting a little bit frustrated because he clearly wants treats, but he's pressing all the wrong buttons. Loki, <laughs> this is not a treat. <laughs> you want a snuggle? Oh. oh, you want a treat? All right, you're just pressing all the buttons. You want pets? Okay. Okay. Okay, all right, so many pets. This sort of seems like a good opportunity. Okay, here you go. To bring in Bill. All right, so now that Loki has been exiled to the other room, uh, we can start our training with Bill. Bill has been a bit difficult to train because uh, he just doesn't like very many treats. So, to try to fix this issue, I have purchased catnip flavor greenies since he likes the greenies, but uh, seems to throw up to the other ones. We'll see if uh, he doesn't throw up this time. Let's find out. Hello, Bill. He 
you didn't throw up. Press the button. Almost. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. 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 Not bad, Bill. You press the button a few times. We just need to get that more consistent. And then we'll go from there. All right. Let's get to training. Don't want this to just be a beard growing video. All right. So here's the deal. So Loki obviously has the button pressing down, but the discrimination is still uh, not great. Oh, you want snuggles and pets? Snuggle. You want pets? Yeah. Oh, tree. Now you're talking. Oh, you're pressing too many. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you want to snuggle? Come here. Look at that tail. Look at his tail. I think his tail gets so poofy because he's like really stimulated uh, by pressing all these buttons and then getting something out of it that it, it's like firing up his reward system, but it's also like. It's kind of like getting goosebumps, I imagine. You want to go outside? You can go outside. Okay. You got to look at the buttons, buddy. You got to know what each one does. Snuggles, okay. Pets. Oh. Hey. You want to play? Yeah, that's the right one. Okay, yeah, good job. Yeah, you're pressing that button on accident. <laughs> oh no, what have I created? It's a monster. Oh, he's pressing the button, the wrong one. You're so close, bud. Just press the button, press the frickin' button. Yeah, put your weight on it. Yeah, 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 good. Yeah. yeah, Bill, we are on our way, but there's still a lot of work to do. Right? Right. Good cat. I only have about a week left to train, which is not very much time, at least if I want to get this edited in time. So, yeah, what do you want? Snuggle. More snuggles? Treats. More snuggles? Food. I don't have food right now. You can press the other one. This is the button that you want to press, I think. That's the one that you know gets you the treat. Maybe he doesn't want the treats, you know? Maybe I am misjudging Loki as a treat vacuum. <gasps> you want a treat? <laughs> you are a treat vacuum. You want pets? Okay. Yeah, you want to snuggle. So Loki is clearly capable of pressing the buttons. He's pressing a lot of different buttons in an attempt to, I believe, get treats. We got to get to a point where he knows what each of these buttons does. We only have a week to do that. Um, and yeah, I don't know, man. Good job. Yeah. Snuggle? Come here. Yeah, almost there. Oh, Bill. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah, good. Oh, snuggle. Come here. I think we're gonna finish it there. I gotta get to work. Bill is picking it up, uh, and pretty quickly. We're in a different spot today. I decided that we should mix it up and uh, not only associate using the board in that one office space. Snuggles, okay. More snuggle. Play. 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 Okay. Play. Gotta press the button. You wanna go outside? Okay, we're gonna actually go outside. Outside. 
outside again? Outside. Okay. Attention. No. No. That doesn't mean no. anything. Outside. Outside. No. Outside. You wanna go outside? outside. Okay. Attention me. Alright, I'll give you attention. Attention me. Okay. Attention me. Attention. Outside. Okay, we're going outside. Outside. You wanna go outside, outside. again? Outside. Alright, let's do it again. So although he keeps pressing the button, uh, he seems to not really want to go outside all that much. Snuggles. Snuggles. Attention, me. Attention, play. Okay. Treat. There Treat. you go. Treat. Yeah. Can I help you? Good. Snuggle. Want snuggles? Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 Snuggle. Snuggle. Play. 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 Attention me. Oh, you're Attention close, me. Bill. Treat. There. Treat. You want another treat? Snuggle. We'll pick back up tomorrow. All right, so different day, same location, uh, and we're gonna be picking up with Bill today because Loki is in the other room and has not quite figured out what we're doing in here quite yet. And that's best for everyone because uh, we don't want him just whining in the other room and making a whole bunch of noise. So we'll start off with training. Let's get into it. Attention me. Yeah, you want attention? Attention me. Okay. Outside. You wanna go outside? Okay. Press the button. Yes, play button. Good. Yeah. You want snuggles? Yeah, you want pets? Attention me. Yeah. Attention me. Play. Okay. Play. Play. You want to play again? Attention me. Yeah. Attention me. Press the right button. Oh, buddy. You want snuggles? Good. Yeah. Yeah. No. No what? Food's not till later. Yeah. Yeah. No, nope, that's the wrong button. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Snuggle. Yeah. 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 Pet. Okay. Yeah. Good cat. <laughs> You're so lazy. All right, Bill. I think we're gonna have to bring in Loki now. Okay. No. 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 No, no is the wrong one. Here, no. Over here. Attention me. Yeah. Attention me. Yeah. Attention me. Okay. Attention me. Okay. Attention me. All right. Snuggle. Okay. Treat. Yeah. Pressing so many buttons. You want snuggle? Attention me! Attention me! Attention me! Attention me! Play! Yeah, you want to play? In a weird way, this has become more difficult over time. Loki has been pressing more of the buttons, but seems to understand them even less than before. There you go. This is the button. Look, this one. Attention me. Okay, sure. Play. Play. Okay, you want to play? Attention. Atten okay. Attention me. There's no treats there. Snuggle. Wrong button. It's really exasperating to see Loki struggle so much with learning these different buttons. He clearly does not know what each button does and uh, will press one of them 
in an attempt to get treats, only to be disappointed and therefore less motivated. I, I know that it takes longer than a month to teach language, you know, kids take years to develop their language abilities, but we're talking about simple button presses, and even that Loki is struggling with, and Loki's far more advanced than even Bill is at this point. If we wanted to teach the cats how to use these buttons consistently, we just have to brute force it and essentially train over and over and over again until they learn, okay, this button does specifically this thing. Maybe that's a form of communication, but is it language? No. Babies pick up syntax and grammar and just like tons of vocabulary. They're like sponges, you know, they absorb this stuff and are able to use it uh, then once they hear it. And here, these are simple commands, things that babies would pick up like that and we're struggling to do even this. But it makes you wonder, like, how do babies do this? You know, how do they pick up language so fast? I have to admit that I was not being very honest with you all about cats learning language. I don't think it's possible to teach or learn language using operant conditioning. B.F. Skinner's theory of language, it's wrong. Or at the very least, it's incomplete. See, after World War II, New technological developments began to change our concept of language. These machines could solve complex, brand new logic problems without being trained or coded to answer them. So people thought, couldn't the human brain do the same thing with language? One linguist named Noam Chomsky thought that there are simply too many words and grammar is too complex to reinforce. And operant conditioning could not account for how much language children learn in such a short amount of time. We're not exposed to enough language in the natural environment while growing up to master the infinite number of complex variations of syntax and grammar through simple operant conditioning. So instead, Chomsky proposed that humans are born with an innate ability to understand and process language that allows us to organize words into different structural elements that are common among all dialects, like verbs and nouns and adjectives allowing us to combine these categories in new, meaningful, grammatically correct ways. In other words, we're not programmable automatons who simply spit out the same thing we're fed. Instead, we're more like machine learning AI that learns and improves from experience without being explicitly programmed. Noam called this universal grammar. And at this point, it seems to be an exclusively human ability. <laughs> I, I know what you're thinking. But what about Coco? What about Bunny the dog or all those other pets? Aren't they proof of animals harnessing human language? Look, I'm not trying to bash on Coco, and you can argue with me if you like, but the answer is no. In the 1980s, a guy named Herb Terrace, who was a firm behaviorist who trained with B.F. Skinner himself, raised his own chimpanzee, who he named Nim Chimsky just to troll Noam Chomsky. And he set out to prove Noam wrong. He used the same kind of behaviorist trainings that were used with Coco. Nim learned a lot of sign language, and when they would interact, Herb thought they were having real, meaningful communication. Nim was speaking to him, but as part of his research, Herb went back and looked through his tapes and did an objective log of all of Nim's signs. And unfortunately, that data convinced Herb that despite how he felt in the moment, Nim was not using language, not forming sentences, not meaningfully communicating. While Nim could make many signs, Herb concluded that Nim did nothing more remarkable than a dog does to sit or heal. There was no sensical structure, and often signs were simply repeats of the same idea, like wanting food or repeating signs that Herb made. And I believe that if you actually studied them systematically and objectively, those same patterns would be seen with Coco and Bunny and all of these other animals if everything wasn't so curated. Don't you think it's interesting how Coco always had Penny Patterson there to explain what her signs mean? Can you show him how to say love? How to say love? What? That? Flower? She's asking you about your coupling. Is that a flower? That's a sun. Or how... Bunny's owner has to give this running narrative to tell viewers what's supposedly going on. Where's the bear? Uh, I heard it too. It's outside, huh? Where tug? Yeah, there is a stranger outside. You want to go look real quick? 
There's been lots of people walking by. Oh yeah. You saw a tiny portion of the training that I did with the cats, but most of it looked like this. Press the button. Come here. Loki. It was frustrating, and grueling, and pretty demoralizing. It was clear that the cats were just pressing a button, not learning a word. And they would often press any button, or multiple buttons, to try to get some reward. But in a supercut, it looks really impressive, and like the cats are intentional with their presses. So, what's really going on? <laughs> I think we're projecting. We see an animal use the tools that we give them and then our brains fill in the blanks to give it more meaning than it actually has. You know, Bill and Loki and these other animals do learn how to communicate through sign language and button presses to request a reward, but it's not language. Language is a structured system of communication that's used to transmit feelings and thoughts. We string sounds and signs in an infinite number of ways to create new meaning out of words and sentences. It's more than just a reaction to an immediate stimulus. We can communicate abstract ideas about the past and the future. So, even though I feel like Loki and Bill really mean something when they're chirping or yelling at me, I don't think we can really personify those vocalizations in the way that we're tempted to. Now. I don't want you to take this as me saying that animals are soulless, incomplete, inferior creatures who live menial, unfulfilled lives. Because they're not. If anything, we should question our overhumanizing of animals and our need to see them as a version of ourselves. Animals do have an understanding of us, and we can communicate on an emotional and social level. Animals are worthy of moral attention. Bill and Loki, they both have an intricate and complex form of communication. And just because they don't speak a language doesn't mean I shouldn't listen. Like I said before, I had hours of training with the cats, so you're only seeing a tiny portion of it because keeping it all in just would not work on YouTube. Which is why I put an extended version on Nebula. Nebula is a streaming platform that me and some of my creator friends set up to give you ad-free extended and exclusive videos and us the freedom to experiment and try different kinds of content rather than worrying so much about demonetization or the algorithm. It features YouTube's top educational creators like Braincraft, Tier Zoo, Tom Scott, and many more. But recently we actually worked out a deal with CuriosityStream, which is the place to watch documentaries online. I've been a CuriosityStream member for a little while now, and I can personally recommend The Secret Life of Cats and Kittenhood, which are two of the thousands of titles that are on there, and uh, they're real cute. <laughs> so here's the deal. For a limited time, when you sign up with the link below, you get 26% off of CuriosityStream's annual plan, which comes out to less than $15 for the entire year. And then on top of that, you'll also get Nebula for free. And it's not a trial, you'll have it as long as you're a CuriosityStream member. All you gotta do is go to curiositystream.com backslash neuro to get CuriosityStream and Nebula for only $14.79. Clicking that link is a really great way to support me and the stuff that I make, and it really gives the space to make more awesome stuff like this. So, thanks everybody. So, what do you think? How well do you communicate with your pets? Are they easy to understand, or are they on kind of a whole different level? Let me know with your stories in the comments. Oh, and also, buy our book. <laughs> we uh, recently released it as of the upload of this video. It's officially uh, available on pre-order. We're just super excited for it. You know, it's, it's something that we've been working insanely hard on and uh, I can't wait to share with all of you. Link is below if you wanna check that out. Thanks for watching. Cats, 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 cats. Cats, 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 cats.